Hello, humans. I am Scott Cannon coming to you live on WLTH 1370 AM from the greatest city in all the world. Gary, Indiana. And this is the counterpoint. Well, folks, in the age of Trump, America's intelligence agencies seem to have gained new favor, even with many on the so-called left praising the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and others as they battle the monster that they all hate. We've seen people like Robert Mueller, who got in front of Congress and blatantly lied about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, leading to the deaths of millions be cheered on as a hero who's supposed to rescue us from that mean old Trump. James Clapper, who got in front of Congress and blatantly lied about the NSA not spying on all of our phone calls and internet activity, has found new life as a cable news talking head regularly quoted by hashtag the resistance. And just today, we watched former CIA head George H.W. Bush, who blatantly lied to invade Iraq and Panama, be eulogized as some sort of hero whitewashing all of his crimes against humanity and be lauded and applauded while the victims of his policies continue to suffer in silence. But for many of us, especially in the black community, it is impossible to ever forgive and forget the type of destruction that the intelligence agencies have wrought in our communities. Bringing this home for me was the reminder that yesterday, December 4th, was the 49th anniversary of the murder of Black Panther Chairman Fred Hampton and his friend and fellow Panther, Mark Clark, at the hands of the Chicago Police Department. You see, during the era of the Civil Rights Movement, the federal government and those intelligence agencies that you see being glorified in our media these days had a real problem with anyone who tried to stand up for the rights of minorities, especially black people. The same FBI that James Comey and Robert Mueller worked so hard for at one point saw Martin Luther King as they put it, as the most dangerous Negro in America. And he was all about peace. So when they saw the emergence of the Black Panther Party, who celebrated the Second Amendment and sought to arm black people and preach self-defense, and also desired to not only unify the black community around the concept of freedom, but also reach out to other groups like Puerto Ricans and even poor and working class whites, who the Panthers saw as part of the struggle against an oppressive capitalist system, the FBI, led by racist drag queen J. Edgar Hoover, decided they had to do something to stop it. And stop it, they did. They created a program called COINTELPRO, which stood for Counter Intelligence Program. This program sought to destroy and disrupt black leaders and groups such as the NAACP, the SCLC, SNCC, Nation of Islam, and the Black Panthers by embedding spies within their ranks creating divisions between members and leaders, and finally, in their words, neutralizing black leaders. Fred Hampton, though only 21 years old, had already made a huge impact in the Chicago area. Joining the NAACP at only 18 years old, he put together a youth group of over 500 people to get more and better recreational facilities established in the neighborhood and to improve educational resources for Maywood's impoverished black people. In 1968, Hampton joined the Panthers and immediately made an impact, brokering a peace treaty between warring street gangs and reaching out to the Latino community through the Young Lord Street Crew and even the white Young Patriots organization. In fact, it was Fred Hampton who coined the phrase Rainbow Coalition that Jesse Jackson has co-opted to describe the multi-racial coalition of organizations that he helped to organize. Hampton, though young, was quickly moving up the ranks of the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Panther Organization. He was in line to become the party's Central Committee's Chief of Staff. But it was not meant to be. On December 4, 1969, the Chicago Police Department, urged on by Mayor Richard J. Daley and the FBI, raided his apartment in the early hours of the a.m., riddling it with 90 bullets killing or wounding almost everyone inside. The police tried to claim they were in a shootout and acted in self-defense with the Panthers, but this was later proven to be false. It was simple and plain an assassination of a young man who had the potential to not only change Chicago history, but American history. And that should be a lesson. 
For all those who are so quick to want to promote and celebrate the FBI, CIA, or any intelligence groups and leaders merely out of fear and distrust of Donald Trump. Yes, Trump has said and done some monstrous things in his two years as president, but he's got a long way to go before he can even match the things that the intelligence agencies have done to destroy people of color here or all around the world. Okay, folks, you can chop it up with me on Twitter at The Chemist Lives. The Chemist is spelled with the K as I am a product of the Gary Community School System, and we can talk about politics, music, sports. You can tell me how terrible I am at this job. Or you can listen to me every Monday from 6 to 8 on Issues and Answers with Jonathan Booz and the precocious hostess with the mostest, Jamelia McGee, bringing us the McGee Report. Hopefully she will be back sometime soon. I am Scott Cannon, and that was The Counterpoint on WLTH 1370 AM. You can also catch us on 92.7 FM in the Chicago, Gary, Indiana area. God bless the working class, and God bless organized labor. And I'm out, humans.